Hello again, guys. Uh, today we're going to look at solving inequalities using um, addition and subtraction. Uh, what you'll notice is this is actually it's very, very similar to solving equations. The only difference is that there's more than one number that will make this a true statement, which is why we're using the greater than or the less than symbols instead of the equals. Uh, when we were solving equations, we got the equals. There was one number that worked that made it a true statement because it was a balance. Now I'm telling you they're not equal, so there's actually multiple numbers that will give you the right answer. All right, don't let it confuse you. We're solving these the exact same way that we solved equations. You'll notice that I've given you your rules for solving inequalities. We want to keep it balanced. Well, it is an inequality. We don't want to mess with the scale. The scale is unbalanced, but we know how it's unbalanced. So we need to keep that same imbalance in it so how are we going to do that? Well, we're going to do that by subtracting or adding to one side and doing the same thing to the other. Whatever you do to one side, you have to do to the other. And then I still have a true statement. I haven't adjusted my, um, my inequality. I've basically made an equivalent inequality. Um, I've just simplified it. So even though we're dealing with inequalities, we're solving them the same way. So keep that in mind. And then obviously we want to isolate our variable. Once the variable is by itself, <coughs> we'll know which values work for our answer. So uh, we want to get the variable <coughs> by itself on one side of the inequality. Um, the note down here was basically what I was telling you. The only difference between solving inequalities and end um, equations is that there's more than one number that works as an answer here. Okay? Pop out of the frame so you can pause that and copy those down if you need to. Let me rephrase that. So you can copy those down because you have to, because it's good to take notes, that's how we learn. All right, so here I'm giving you um, a sample problem. It's the word problem that we're going to um, write as an inequality that we're gonna solve. So our problem is Eddie's been saving only dollar bills. The reason we word it that way is it means only whole numbers. We're not gonna deal with decimals right now. Uh, in a piggy bank, on Monday, after he put $12 into his piggy bank, there was at least $33, meaning at least there could have been 33 or there could have been more. We're not sure. He, like me, was too lazy to crack it open and count his money. So how much money was in his piggy bank before Monday? So the first thing I'm doing is I'm writing it as a mathematical sentence or an inequality written with numbers. So I don't know what he started with. That's my variable, which I like to use x for. x, he added $12. When he did this, he has a number that is greater than or equal to the 33, because I said there was at least $33. So that means this side could be 33 or it could be more. So you really need to stop and think about which way that goes. Then we're going to solve the inequality. Same way we solved um, equations. I want to get x by itself. I'm doing addition, so what's the inverse operation? Well, I'm going to undo that by subtracting my 12 out. Since I've done it to this side, I need to do the same thing to this side. I need to keep my equation, or my inequality in this case, balanced. This line is going to stay the same. So just copy this sign down. Don't flip it. Make sure your x stays on the same side, because if you start flipping sides, that's where you're going to wind up with answers that are backwards. So this sign, I just kept in my answer. Over here, the 12s went away because I canceled them out by undoing them. So I'm left with x. I've isolated my variable. When I balance out this side by subtracting the negative 12, I find out that on Monday he had to have had at least $21, meaning he had $21 or more in there. Because then when I add 12 to that, I get 33 or a larger number, depending on what this was. All right? So that's all we're saying. I'm saying um, if, you, if you look at this, basically what this is saying, our solution set is numbers that are 21 or more. So if I plug in 21 here, what you'll find is I get 33 is greater than or equal to 33. That's a true statement. However, there's more numbers that work because I said greater than or equal to. So if I plug in 25, 25 gives me 37. 37 is greater than 33. So there's more than one number that'll work. If this was an equal sign, this would be the only number that works. That's the only difference. So don't let that confuse you when you're doing the problems. So Eddie had at least $21 before Monday. All right, so we're going to look at a few more of these. Um, and rather than word problems, I've just given them to you um, in the mathematical form. So again, we're going to look at them. Um, and you'll notice I've given you the lines. We're going to practice graphing them as well once we've solved them. 
So we first thing I want to do is I want to look at this. Okay, I have a variable over here. What operation is happening to my variable? Addition. How am I going to undo that addition? I'm going to use the inverse operation, which is subtraction. So to get the variable by itself, I'm going to subtract that number away. Now remember, we need to keep it balanced because I want to make a true statement. So whatever I do to the one side, I need to do to the other side. And in all honesty, you can pretend this is an equal sign and then just copy the answer, the this symbol back down into the answer so you don't get confused. So we're treating them just like they were equations. Only difference is it's a different symbol. So when I subtract those out, I'm left with n on this side. Keeping the same symbol, 10 minus 4 gives me 6. So basically what I'm saying is any answer that is 6 or less will make this a true statement. And you can check these the same way that you would check um, equations. Pick a number that is 6 or less. Let's pick 5. If I plug 5 in here, 5 plus 4 is 9. 9 is indeed less than 10, so that's a true statement. So I know that my answer is correct. So this, whenever we're graphing, remember, you can't graph this up here. We have to solve it into a simple inequality like this before we can graph it. This tells me what number to mark. I'm going to mark 6. It can be equal to 6, so I'm going to use a closed circle. And n is less than, and the variable is on the left, which means this shows me the way my arrow is going to go. Anything less than 6, which are numbers going that way. So again, look over here. Um, <clears throat> what, are, what operation is happening to my variable is the first thing I look at. It's addition. What is the inverse, or how can I undo that? Well, I'm going to have to subtract 8 to get n by itself, because I want n by itself on this side. Since I've done it to the one side, I need to do the same thing to the other side. So on this side, I'm left with n, keeping my sign the exact same, don't mess with it, and then doing my math. 14 minus 8 gives me 6. So I have n is greater than or equal to 6, which means 6 is the number I want to mark on my number line. It can be equal to, so that means I want to use a closed circle. My variable's on the left, so that means that that's showing me the way my arrow should point. The numbers that are greater than 6 are that way. All right, over here you'll notice our variable is on the right and not on the left, which means we can't use the trick of following the arrow. It's going to face the opposite direction. But if we look here, what operation is happening to my variable? Subtraction. So how do I undo that? I want to use the inverse operation. So I need to add 9 to get it by itself. Since I've added 9 to this side, I need to do the exact same thing to the other side to keep it balanced. Even though it's an inequality, we need to keep it balanced. I'm left with n here. Keep this facing the same way. Do not try to change the way it faces. 4 plus 9 gives me 13. So I'm going to read this backwards. I always like to read my variable first because it helps me think about it right in my mind. n is greater than 13. So 13 is the number I'm marking. Where are the numbers that are greater than or larger than 13? They're this way. Now remember, since it's not equal to, I need to use an open circle because 13 is not greater than 13, so it's not included in here. Only the numbers that are beyond that are included in there. All right? All right, here I have d plus negative 3 is greater than 2. I'm doing addition, so to undo that, I need to subtract. However, remember, I need to subtract the exact same thing. I'm subtracting negative 3. Since I'm subtracting negative 3 from this side, I also need to subtract negative 3 from the other side. Now, if you recall, when we're doing our operations, whenever we subtract, we change it to addition by adding the additive inverse. So now I have a 2 plus 3 on this side, which is going to give me 5. Keep my sign facing the same way. Don't change that. And on this side, I'm just left with a D because I had negative 3, and I'm saying I took away that negative 3. So D is greater than 5. My variable is on the left, which means I can just mark my 5. It's going to show me the way my arrow goes. Numbers greater than 5 are this way. And it's an open circle. Why? There's no equal sign, so 5 does not make that a true statement. Um, again, this can be a little confusing, so if you're confused, please, please rewatch the video. Uh, we'll go over it again in class. I can answer any questions that you have. All right? Um, also, feel free to uh, ask any questions on your online quiz, on the comments, or send me an email. Uh, have a great night, guys.